want to give you guys a quick little demonstration here this morning on um, the inflator shock absorber system that I have on this uh, 78 Buick here. Okay, so my 83 Buick Electra has this particular type of system. Um, it's actually a GM uh, installed option that was available from 1983. Um, but it is automatic. So if you were to load up the trunk, load up the car with passengers, six passenger vehicle, we loaded the car, we got luggage, golf clubs, everything you name it in here. Um, the vehicles that were offered in 1983 with the air pump and air ride, well, the air pump will kick in, send air to the shock absorbers and fill up the shock absorbers with air to compensate for the load. Well, here we have the same kind of deal, except this is a manual operated device. And I'll show you guys this. Take note of this trailer ball. See here where I gouged it? This is when I had the system set at 40 pounds of air in the shock absorbers. The car was sitting lower. Now, I bottomed out and hit this against here. Didn't bottom out on this rock, nothing hit that, but I mean, this unit here scraped along this board at 40 pounds of air. So what I've done is I've inflated it by six to eight pounds and I got that much lift. I'll show you this unit in a minute. I'm gonna pop the trunk and I'm going to show you guys the system. I'm gonna pop the hood as well because I want to show you guys the air pump. Now, go ahead and show you the type of accessories that come with this particular unit. We have here this type of accessory where you can inflate your tires, okay? And you have an instruction manual all in here, okay? Now this was dealer installed. From 1978. See? We even have the uh, GM logo here. This is an actual licensed GM product and it was installed by a dealer. Anyway, so this car essentially more or less has air ride suspension. So Rather than me yak on about this, I'm going to show you how this device works. And um, I'm not going to inflate it more than 50 pounds in the system. I'm actually going to lower the car down um, to where it was. Just to give you guys a show you how this works. I'm going to lower the car onto where it was before. It was just, that trailer ball was just touching that board. So I'm going to lower it. It's about two inches, about an inch and a half off the ground right now. This also makes it a lot easier for when you're cleaning your tires because notice how much more lift we have. If we ever take note on my previous videos about my 83 Electra, or if you watched the previous video about this car, you'll notice that a little bit of the white walls aren't showing because the car is lowered and doesn't have a lot of air in the shocks. Um, I want to take note, I want to show you guys something quickly here too about this air compressor. Okay, so. Here we have the air compressor here. Now on 1983 models like mine, it was actually over here. It was mounted on the inner fender and it was completely electronic. You didn't touch it. There was no switches. There was no gadgets. There was no accessories to, um, actually there is this valve on the one on the 83. However, it, um, it doesn't come with any accessories. It does have this though, but, uh, anyway, in any event, um, so back in 1983, it was actually sitting over here on the inner fender, but it is mounted over here. Okay, see, dealer installed. We have bushings, making sure that it's not going to vibrate because once this kicks in, it's going to make some noise and move around a bit. So we have rubber grommet bushings here to keep it from, you know, vibrating against anything steel. We don't want it making any noise because this car is, well, as any Buick, it's next in line with Cadillacs. Okay, so it has to be quiet, it has to look good, it's gotta look neat. So, 
There's the air pump. We have a switch here that controls the pump. It will start the pump. And we also have this screw here where you can hook up your accessory cable, which I just showed you in the trunk, so you can put air in your tires. Now, that's the way I found that unit. I'm not going to undo that unit. I'm going to leave it like that because I don't ever plan on using it. If I ever need to put air in my tires or anything else, I have a compressor at my shop for that. All that stuff that came in the trunk is staying the way I found it, to preserve it. So, <clears throat> because essentially long after I'm about ready to croak and have one foot in the grave, this car will be worth something. So, I'm keeping everything the way it is as I found it, from when I got it. From when I drove it here, I popped the trunk, that's the way I found it, I'm not touching anything back there. Same with under the hood. Everything's going to stay the same. It's going to stay clean. That's the end of it. So anyway, that's the pump. The accessories I'm not touching. I have a shop to do all that stuff with. So I'm going to show you how this operates. A lot of you guys already know. Possibly a lot of you out there already have maybe a car like this and have this type of setup already dealer installed on your old classic car. It, you know, it all depends. But for those of you who have never seen something like this before, I'm going to lower this car. Now, the car can only... I can't back it up any further. I was going to pump up the shock absorbers to about 50, 55. But the thing is, is the car hasn't dri been driven anywhere. I don't really want to put a lot of air pressure in the shocks because it stayed at 40 for a very long time. The previous owner had this installed and he never towed a trailer with it. Don't know why he had it installed. I guess he just kind of liked the idea of having it. So, anyway, I'm going to lower the car, and then I'm going to raise it, give you guys a demonstration on how this works. It's not very fast, okay? It'll take about a minute to get, you know, about that much lift, and it'll probably take about 30 seconds to drop it. So, I'm going to show you guys that. Now, I was going to pump it full of about 55 PSI and then back the car up over this, but you know what, I decided I'm not going to do that, just in case after a day or two, it slowly starts to lose pressure, and then the car is sitting on this rock here. You know, as you can tell, the girl, the wife and I don't really have a lot of room to park her journey here anymore because of this, but, you know, I'm just going to leave it as is, where it is. Um, okay, so. Um, so right now, I'm going to go ahead and lower this vehicle. And um, I want to show you guys, actually, the switch. I want to show you what is actually in the vehicle here. So this controller is located right here. And we have a gauge here, okay? Now, right now I have it set at 50 pounds. And here's our switches. So I'm gonna lower it down to 40. Okay, it's down at 40 pounds. Definitely lowered a bit. See how much clearance we have? We've lost quite a bit. So if I lower it down to 35, the car will actually be dragging on that piece of 8x8. Now, I read in the book that it should be around uh, 40 pounds. You definitely don't want to run it dry. You get an awful lot of banging, you'll destroy the shock absorbers. Okay, so actually that's around 30 pounds. And as you can see, we're touching. The car probably would go lower, except the only problem is, is that I am parked on that now. So I'm going to give you guys a demonstration. I'm going to raise the vehicle up to about 45 pounds, and then I'm going to lower it down back onto this board. Just for something to do something for you guys to enjoy. I'm going to start the engine for this. That compressor draws quite a bit of power on the battery.
so we got quite a bit of lift on the bag again. I'm gonna lower it back to where it was though. Anyway, that'd be that for that little uh, episode on that. Kind of neat, kind of boring at the same time. I know a lot of you guys aren't going to enjoy this, but I kind of figured that was kind of neat for something like this to actually be dealer installed right from the factory right in 1978. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, vehicle hasn't moved anywhere at all. Actually, in fact, it's, uh, I just parked it here and it's been sitting here for the duration. Um, so soon enough, I uh, I uh, I will start driving it. Uh, just haven't decided on when. Just kind of doing a bit of things to it. I'm checking everything over, tires, brakes, make sure it is safe and whatnot before I get a safety put on it. So I don't know, July, August, maybe put it on the road and start enjoying it a little bit. Um, but after that, park it for the winter. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this, another video of this great, classic 1978 Buick Luxury. I hope you guys do enjoy this. Um, but yeah, absolutely very nice automobile. Very, very nice. Immaculate condition. Very, very nice. Anyway guys, hope you guys are having a fantastic Wednesday. Um, hope you aren't partying too hard. Save that for Thirsty Thursday, dear lads. Take care. We'll see you on the weekend.